Hi. Now here we have an example where we've got to find a particular observation, the value of an observation from a normal distribution. So in this example we've got the length of time L hours that a phone will work before it needs charging is normally distributed with a mean of 100 hours and a standard deviation of 15 hours. And we've got to find the value of D such that the probability of L being less than D equals 0 0.10. Okay, if this is a problem that you'd like to uh, try, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So, how would we go about something like this? Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is sketch my normal distributions. One for L, which has a mean of 100, and uh, underneath would have our standardized normal distribution. Now, I'll just define L again here. So we'll just say L is distributed normally with a mean of 100, and the second parameter is the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, okay? Now, we need to place on D on this distribution here. So where's D going to be? Well, we're told that the probability of being less than D is 0 0.10. So we're looking for the area to the left. Remember, the whole area underneath the graph is represented as 1. So the area to the left has got to be 0 0.1. So it's got to be a point over here. Okay, So we'll say that this is L equaling D. And we would have this area here, representing the probability of being less than it, is 0 0.10. I would do exactly the same by dropping the, a dotted line, say, down onto the standardized normal distribution. And so this area to the left here is also going to be 0 0.10. And this is for this particular value of Z. Let's call it, say, Z1. Now you should be familiar with the connection between the standardized variable and the observed variable. It's always given by the Z value, in this case Z1, equals the observed value, which is D, minus the mean, which is 100, all divided by the standard deviation of our distribution, which was 15. Now to work out D, I need Z1. And to work out Z1, I have to use tables. And you've got a choice of two sets of tables that we can use here. And I'll show you both sets, okay, or extracts from both sets. The first set that I would use when I'm working out an observed value is I'll turn to the inverse normal tables. And in the book that I was using, the tables for the inverse normal distribution gave me this area here, P, which represented the probability of being more than a particular value of Z. Now, we've got a Z value here, Z1, where the probability is less than it. But we can still use these tables because if we mirror Z1 to the other side, Okay, it's going to be a positive value for Z1, and you can imagine that our value here, shaded to the right of this particular value, something like this, our p value, would be 0 0.10. And so, if you look up 0 0.10, I can see that it's 1.2816 standard deviations away from the mean. So this value here for Z would be 1.2816, but if I mirror it back again on the other side here, then Z1 from these tables would be the negative value, minus 1.2816, okay? But you could use the cumulative normal distribution tables. Remember, these are the 
tables where they give you the probability of being less than a particular value of z. Now, in this particular situation, z1 is on the left of 0. But, again, if we were to mirror this to the right of 0, then the area to the right of the z1 value would be 0 0.10, but the value to the left, the area to the left, would be 0 0.90, the equivalent of 90%. So, if I look up z as being 0 0.90, I find that I've got two values here close to 0 0.90. The closest one is this one here, 0.8997. And I can see the corresponding Z value would have been 1.28. 1.28 here would have given 90% that way, 10% that way. But I've got to mirror it back onto the other side. So taking my 1.28, it would now be minus 1.28. So you can see how close it is to this value. So, whether you use minus 1.2816 or you use these tables and get minus 1.28, it's up to you. I'm going to take this value though, I'm going to substitute it into here, and I now therefore have minus 1.2816 equals d minus 100 over 15. And all I need to do now is just rearrange this for D. And so if I times both sides by 15 and add 100, I therefore have D equals 100 minus 15 multiplied by the 1.2816. And working this out gives me 80.776. And if I round this, say, to one decimal place, the answer is 80.8 .8 to 1 dp. And as a check, it's useful having these diagrams, in my opinion, because you can check out your value. It's certainly less than 100, OK? So it looks reasonable. Because I often find that if there's mistakes to be made, it's purely be over this negative business, OK? So having your diagrams here should give you a valuable check to see which side your Z values and your observed values are going to be. All right?